anker-associated vasculitis are small vessel vasculitis. That means that the smallest vessels all through the body, but especially in the kidney, the lungs and the ENT are involved and that they are get inflamed. And they are associated with the occurrence of antibodies against neutrophil components and these are called ANCA and they are of great diagnostic value in diagnosing these diseases. Um, formerly this uh, subgroup of these diseases was known as Wegener's granulomatosis and nowadays that is called the GPA. It, well, I said it, it can occur all through the body, so the symptoms can really uh, differ per patient. So none of our patients is the same. Um, first, regarding the kidneys, well, that's, some, that's something that patients don't uh, mention. Eh? They, don't, they don't feel, they feel bad, but there are no real symptoms. Um, but regarding the ENT, it's clear. They have uh, blood noses and they have crusting. And regarding the lungs, they can get lung bleeding. But in general, the patient feels very bad, is sick. Uh, there is a great decline in weight. They have fever, um, so they are not. They are really very ill. And the spectrum can be mild, mild um, to uh, so so ill that they have to go to the ICU. In the in the past, people died of it. Uh, and uh, in the 70s of the last century, um, we found that cyclophosphamide in combination with corticosteroids could bring the disease in, rem in remission. But these drugs, especially cyclophosphamide, is very toxic. So patients had cumulative doses of cyclophosphamide and, well, the, the toxicity of the drug was, was uh, severe. So after that uh, recognition, um, cyclophosphamide was replaced by milder uh, immunosuppressants like azathioprine, methotrexate and MMF. Uh, so nowadays the, the therapy consists of two stages. First an induction phase, often with, with uh, cyclophosphamide, cyclophosphamide, but nowadays also with a rituximab and subsequently a maintenance stage in which patients are treated with, for instance, and especially azathioprine. What's the difficulty with this disease is that we don't know what patient needs a maintenance therapy for what time. Because it's a chronic relapsing disease, so after stopping the immunosuppressive medication, there is the risk of a relapse. Uh, and you can say that approximately 50% of patients relapses within five years. Uh, and every relapse is associated with additional toxic immunosuppressive therapy, with additional uh, damage and especially to the kidney, um, every relapse makes the chance bigger of uh, becoming, of getting end-stage renal disease. And that's, a, that's a, a danger for the patient. So on the, on the one hand, you have the, the danger of the relapse and the associated damage. And on the other hand, you have the, the, uh, the immunosuppressives and their toxic profile and the risk of infections. And that's a, that's a difficult balance. So there are, first of all, we are trying to identify what patients are at risk for a relapse. And in the past, we did monitoring of ANCA um, and we know, we know risk factors for relapse, but until now adapting therapy to the, the, the risk factors didn't result in a better outcome of the patients, our patients, unfortunately. Rituximab is an, is an alternative therapy, which I, I already mentioned. It is as effective as cyclophosphamide in using uh, remission of disease, but the toxicity was the same. Um, but there has been a, a trial in the, which was last week published in the New England Journal of Medicine from France and that trial showed that maintenance with rituximab, maintenance therapy with rituximab was more effective than maintenance with azathioprine and reduced the, the number of relapses. So that's really very interesting uh, observation uh, and new trials will try to uh, explore this. So maybe that's, that's the way to go.